A Mobius strip or loop is a one-sided object known as a non-orientable surface, meaning that within it one cannot consistently distinguish clockwise from counterclockwise turns. You can read more about this on Wikipedia, but we can easily demonstrate the principle by getting a strip of paper, putting one twist in it and joining the ends together. This means that we essentially have one continuous side, so if we follow it all around we travel over what would have been both sides of the strip when it was flat and return to where we started. Also, if we cut a Mobius strip in half by just cutting all the way down the middle of it all the way round, we end up with one massive loop with two twists in it, which is quite interesting. So I got a YouTube comment on one of my other funny tank videos from one of my YouTube channel members saying why don't we make a tank with Mobius strip treads with a twist in like that? And they didn't really know why that was a good idea other than it looks cool, and I don't know either, so we're going to build one anyway and see what happens. So I've designed some track links and they have these square kind of pivot sections in the front here and that allows two of those tracks to pivot against each other as well as bending normally to go round sprockets. And that gives us around 18 degrees of movement either way. So it's time to 3D print a few of those up and see if this actually works in real life and what sort of rotation we can get out of this. We're going to need quite a few links for the tracks. So I'm using some 3mm stainless steel in there and that fits nicely in the slot and we get that rotation at the link point. So with a couple of those together, we can see that it bends in both directions, so it pivots like this, and also bends to go around the sprockets, which is just what we need for a tank. So there's 10 track links together, and as you can see, that almost twists all the way around with 18 degrees on each one. We should get the complete 180, but we're not quite there. Probably need another one to get around to 180. That's probably because of the tolerancing on the 3D prints on those swiveling parts. Obviously it bends the other way so it can go around the sprockets. I'm not sure how easily it's going to run when we twist it and we want to get it back on the sprockets at the end to come back to the bottom again. But there we go, let's put some more together and see what happens. We don't do these things because they're easy though, we do them because we thought they'd be easy. So there's 11 links together which pretty much gives us 180 degrees quite comfortably. Obviously this tank's going to be quite long though just so we can get that twist in the length of it. So the rest of this looks pretty much like a normal tank, the only difference is we've got this massive gap in the top here so we've got space to get the twist in the track in. This is going to turn out to be quite a sizeable assembly, so just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers, it makes it much easier when you've got lots of printers to make all the parts in parallel. This is part of the drivetrain which is basically a cylinder which fits between two sprockets and those go at each end to drive the two holes in the tracks. There's a lot of those needed though because we need four sprockets per track and two tracks and each sprocket's got two ends. The whole thing's pretty long so I'm using the Lolzbot Taz long bed which has a bed twice as long as the other printers to do the main side pieces for the track. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link and I'll get a small commission. I printed those side parts with a 1.2mm nozzle as well, so actually really big tough parts and they didn't take too long to print. Obviously there's one of those that goes on each side of each track, so there's actually four in total that fit like that. Here are the sprockets themselves, so there's two ends, you'll notice one has a longer piece on, and that's to put a pulley on one of them to drive them, and those of course go either side of the cylinder there, and they just screw down. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, the last time I did a tank I didn't put any bearings in, it was just metal on plastic and it didn't run very well, so check out simplybearings.co.uk. Of course these sprockets run really well now, I'm just running them on studding, but that studding allows me to screw the whole tank together with nuts. I remembered to put bogey wheels on this tank, so these fit in the middle, there are three of them which fit in the middle of the track at the bottom. You'll notice those are quite skinny, and we'll find out why that is later, and those are fixed with just some nuts done up against each other either side so they stay in place, and that holds the whole frame together. I did remember to put the belt on and the pulley so we can drive one of the sprockets later. The next parts are these which hold the top sprockets and these screw onto the frame separately and we'll find out why that is very shortly. Also got these pieces which screw between the two sides and that just makes the whole frame a bit more rigid so it doesn't twist and it's just not relying on that studding to kind of hold the whole thing rigid. The top sprockets fit between these grey plates and I made those separately and that allows me to be able to reprint them really easily to tension the track up by moving the top sprockets apart without having to go and reprint the whole side with that massive printer. So that just makes things a bit easier for getting things tensioned. So that's one side done, we've got to put the track on now and see if we can get that twist in. I've put this track together with 30 links in, 
And I think we need another eight or maybe 10 in there to try and get that twist in, of course, which will make that section a bit longer. So let's put together the rest and see if this actually runs fine with the twist in and if this works at all. With the assembly, the length is the minimum amount of track links I could get in there to get that twist in and have the track go all the way round is 37 links. So there it is. It actually seems to run surprisingly well with that twist in. I was expecting it to be far worse. However, if I run it too fast or I run it too far, then some odd things happen, so that track isn't quite as tight as it should be, and that results in the sprockets at the bottom there popping completely out of the holes in each track link that they're supposed to drive, and sort of getting stuck in between the tracks. So yeah, that track is quite loose, and I couldn't really make it tighter. I do have these grey plates that I can just reprint though, so I've moved the holes around 10mm to the left on one end, and that's made that track quite a lot tighter. I've used these motors quite a few times before for crawling vehicles. They are 24 volt worm driven gearboxes and they're pretty powerful. I've made a hub for each of those. Each one has an M6 nut and a grub screw in there. And then there's a pulley piece which fits on separately so I can reprint that if I need to retolerance it as well. That fits onto a plate which also allows me to retolerance the tension by just reprinting the plate. So there it is fitted in there. And of course that's driving that pulley and sprocket I fitted earlier. So here it is running under power. I've just put a battery on the motor there and running it backwards and forwards. This has actually worked out pretty well. I'm surprised that twist works as well without the chain coming off. And also the sprockets now stay into the track link. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we just need to build another one. So you might have noticed these two bits of studding poking out the other side. Obviously that's with the other track that we're going to build out there. But before we put the rest of that together and see how well it works, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB manufacturing, assembly, and other types of manufacturing services, including contract manufacturing, and it's all under one roof. PCBWay manufactures all sorts of boards, including standard fiberglass boards, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. PCBWay also provides CNC services including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. The CNC machining services include a wide range of materials including aluminium, stainless steel and various plastics. If you don't see the material you like, you can also choose from custom materials. PCBWay's 3D printing services include SLS, SLA, DLP, FDM and more in a variety of materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse through a variety of finishes and get a quote. Check out the PCBWay shared project section. This is a community of user submitted projects with PCB schematics and parts listings so you can reproduce the projects you see there. They also have a module store which has all sorts of items for sale such as Arduino boards, toolkits, robot parts and kits and sensor modules. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. Right, let's put this together and see what happens. The other side is pretty much exactly the same. So in the middle we now have some electronics made of an Arduino Mega and an orange RC radio receiver. And I've got two 6S LiPos wired in series driving the motors through two BTS 7960 motor drivers. And I think those are rated at something like 28 volts and 40 amps which is more than enough for those motors. As usual I'm using my DSM remote which is a universal remote for all my projects and you can check that out in my channel. On the whole, it runs pretty well. I'm pretty happy how this has worked out. It's pretty much as good as any RC tank, I think. So yeah, let's just drive that up and down a bit. Seems to work fine. The twist in the track also has stayed on and it just seems to just cascade properly off and on the sprockets at the end. So I'm really happy with that too. But let's see what we can do with it. Can we drive over obstacles and all sorts of things that tanks should do? Well, a bit of aluminium extrusions, no problem for it. But let's try a bit of a ramp. So yeah, that seems to work okay, even though my tracks have no grips and they're entirely smooth. Let's try an even bigger ramp made of some smooth shiny acrylic. And that seems to work just fine too. But what about an even bigger, smoother ramp? Let's see if we can get up there. Well, no joy to start with because those treads won't go over the ledge, which is probably about an inch and a half deep. So I'm just going to help it and just get those front treads up to start with. Uh, it's okay while we're pushing against the ground, but as soon as we leave the ground then that table's just too smooth and we've got no grips on our track, so that's no good at all.
Well, that seems to work just as well as any other 3D printed tank, I guess. But the question you want the answer to is, why have we got this Mobius strip track? Why have we got this twist in the track? So the thing I could come up with was that when we look at really big track vehicles, like Megabots, for instance, they've got loads and loads of friction with the ground. They have real problems turning because when one track goes forward and the other one goes backwards, some of that track at the ends basically has to slide sideways. So they have loads of problems with friction and they get stuck. So what they did was put smooth nylon plates all over the treads to reduce that friction and make the track smooth. Now, in my case, the tracks are smooth anyway, so it's fine at turning and things, but it's also really bad at gripping ramps, as we've already seen. But in this case, we've got this twist, so we can have one side of the track with treads on, that's something that grips, and the other side smooth, and then we get the best of both worlds. Um, although we've only actually got one side because it's a Mobius strip, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. So I cut up some big sticky pads into lots of small pieces and put them all over the tracks, making sure I avoid the holes where those sprockets go, of course, and also the bit in the middle where the dolly wheels go, and I've covered the whole track. And basically we've covered one length of the track. So that means that we get one entire circumference of the track, which is completely smooth, and then eventually we get one whole circumference, essentially the other side, where we've got grips on. And so we have one transition point where it swaps over that's actually only in one place on the track. So there's all of the grips and then you can see the transition point coming round. And then we get one complete circumference of a completely smooth track again. And another complete circumference with the grips on, which gives us quite a lot of variety. So you can see the bogey wheels run in the middle of those pads there at the bottom, which is why they're skinny and why I put the pads there. And also those pads run in between the two halves of the sprocket, and that's why that cylinder is so much smaller than the two halves of the sprockets, which are screwed onto the end. I also moved the holes in the grey parts again to tension those tracks up so they're much, much tighter, so nothing weird happens now there's grips. Let's try driving again though, and obviously Batters and Fords works perfectly well no matter what the orientation of the tracks and those grips is, but as soon as they get out of sync and we try and turn, with the tracks turning in opposite directions, then basically of course the smooth side just slips and the grippy side overwhelms it, and so lots of weird things happen when we try to steer depending on what the orientation of those two tracks is and the position of the slippy part and the grippy part. So there the tracks are turning in opposite directions, but the one with the grips is winning, and we can't turn at all. Here they are in sync with two smooth sides facing the ground, and of course that just turns fine now, and we don't have too much friction either, so we don't get that screeching sound from the rubber grips wiping on the floor. So that would be quite good if it was a massive robot with loads of mass on, but of course as soon as we get one grippy track, that just totally overwhelms the other one, and it'll only go in a straight line. But let's try the ramp again. So obviously the smooth tracks won't get us over the edge there on the tabletop, but as soon as the grips come round, then that drives up there perfectly fine. And because we've got that whole circumference of grips, we've still got plenty more to go and we've reached the end of the ramp. So that plan worked out quite well. I'm not going to drive off the end though, so let's just drive back down again. And now we've got two smooth surfaces on the ground, we can turn around perfectly well. It will of course drive on other surfaces perfectly well, just like a normal RC tank. So if there's a bit of grip on the ground like the grass, then basically things work perfectly well. It doesn't really matter what the orientation of the grips and smooth is, and I can still turn perfectly well on the grass there because we just seem to get equal friction. Driving over uneven surfaces like piles of wood works pretty well as well. Not really seeing any slip when we've got the smooth parts of the tracks. Got one smooth and one grippy there coming round. Seems to work just perfectly well. The grips do help, of course, but basically it doesn't seem to really matter and it will drive over any old loads of wood or any other obstacles perfectly well, just like a normal RC tank. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this as open source and you can find the link in the description to this video. And don't forget you can support me through Patreon if you'd like to. And if you like funny tank projects, then check out my channel. I've got a tank that bends to steer, a wave drive tank, and also a triangular shaped omnidirectional tank that can move in any direction. And you'll find all of those in my channel.